Hello class, welcome to ENGL 0315 Integrated Reading and Writing 1. Um, today we're going to be going over course policies and the syllabus. Um, first things first, let me share my screen. Okay, this is going to be your course. Um, you'll notice that you have a course home. Uh, course home is going to be very important uh, to your success in the course. The two main things you're going to want to pay attention to are going to be your announcements and I believe it's your to-do. Um, you should be able to see when things are due on your to-do list. Um, if you can't, let me know. Um, you'll also see your due dates in multiple places. Um, your announcements, you'll see there's already one here. Uh, they will be sent directly to your email. There will also be posted in the announcements tab. I will be telling you what things are due and when they're due. Typically, assignments will be due on Fridays and Sundays at 11.59 p.m. Uh, Fridays will usually be major assignments such as essays and rough drafts and minor assignments such as labs, short writings, etc. will be due on Sundays. The exception to that is going to be your conference. Your conference will be due at 5 p.m. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. Okay, so up at the top on the very left, you're going to see a getting started tab. This is going to have basic course information to help you succeed. First things first, this top link, the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian kid by Sherman Alexie, that is going to be your novel. You will be reading this novel throughout your class. I recommend that you read 15 pages a week. It is not a hard read. It's actually pretty decent. Um, I really enjoy it because the main character wants to be a comic book artist, so you'll see little comics throughout the novel that kind of add um, flavor to the story. Okay. Um, you're going to see three folders, rubrics, MLA formatting, and general instructions. The rubric folder is going to have how I grade things. Basic essay and assignment rubric is going to show you how I grade your essays and your short writing. Then how I grade your discussion board how I grade your peer reviews. And this essay comments breakdown gives you the rubric that I use and what I look for for each category. So the rubric you're gonna see is there's gonna be style for 10 points, MLA for 15, analysis for 20, proof for 20, and grammar for 20. And further on, you will see how many points you will lose depending on the type of error that you have. This is not a complete list. But when I grade your papers, I will write comments stating how many points you lost according to the rubric and why you lost them, okay? So then let's move on to MLA formatting. Okay, so MLA formatting is used in your humanities and your, your humanities, that's gonna be English, history, government, et cetera. It is a type of formatting for your papers. Some of you may be familiar with it. Um, you need to have a header, you need to have 12 point font, Times New Roman, double spaced, um, with page numbers and your last name, et cetera. There are two resources here to show you how MLA formatting works. The first is my favorite. It is called the Purdue Owl MLA site. So Purdue, which is an Ivy League college, their writing lab, has created an online MLA handbook. It is completely free um, and you have complete access to it. You're gonna notice here on the left, it's gonna show you basic format, how to format quotations, and depending on the type of source, how to format it. So let's say I wanted to format, a, um, I wanted to cite a movie. So I'm going to look under other common sources. And then I'm gonna to go to the heading films or movies. And it's gonna show me a couple of different ways to cite a movie. So it's very helpful in that it shows you exactly how things are cited, um, in what order they're cited, and what you need in order to make a complete citation. Very, very handy. The second source is gonna be a downloadable MLA uh, handbook. It's gonna say 2016, that's when MLA updated to eighth edition, which is what we currently use, okay? And last but not least, you are going to see the general instructions. Right now, there's only one file in there, and that is going to be for your peer review. Um, and it's going to show you a checklist. 
and what a peer review consists of. So we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later on. So here you are. Okay, let's talk syllabus. You can find the syllabus in the syllabus tab right here underneath getting started. Now, depending on the course you're in, you're either gonna be online or you are going to meet Tuesdays, Thursdays, 9.40 to 10.55 in the morning. I strongly suggest that you attend the Zoom meetings. In the Zoom meetings, I will go over what is due for the week. I will answer any questions. It is a great way to access me. Um, I will also be doing lectures on course content that will help you complete the assignment. Um, it is strongly recommended that you attend those Zoom sessions. And when you attend those Zoom sessions, proper attire is required. Um, if you have pajamas, please do not wear revealing pajamas. Do not wear revealing clothing. Do not wear offensive clothing. And please do not lay down in your bed. Please be sitting up. Um, I don't care where you sit. You can sit at a desk. You can sit up on your bed. Just don't be laying down during class. Um, and you will be required to keep your video on but it is strongly recommended that you attend those sessions. So you're gonna see in the syllabus, is gonna be my instructor information. You can also find that in the instructor information tab or the instructor office tab right here. My name is Kristen King. My office location, um, physical location is in Old Main 206. That is the tutoring center. That is where I normally am. Um, I am available by phone, by Zoom, by email, by physical location. Um, by course message, um, there are multiple ways to contact me. I am going to ask that you use course message as a last result, last result, last resort. The reason that I ask that is for email and phone calls and texts, I get instant notification that you need me. Um, I don't get that with course messages and I only check them about every other day. So if you have an emergency, please either email me or call me. My uh, phone number is 432-935-1031. That is my personal phone number. I am going to ask that you do not call me before eight in the morning and that you do not call me after eight at night. So from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., I will be available. My email, which is the best and most reliable way of contacting me, is kking at howardcollege.edu. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. So, this course is prepare you for composition one. The instructional materials are going to be, of course, the PDF of the novel, which we've talked about. You will also need access to Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Adobe PDF Reader, um, some kind of web browser, regular access to a computer and the internet. Um, I will do my best to be accommodating. I know that some of you may just have your phones or your tablet. Um, if you have trouble accessing anything on your device, please let me know. Okay, course requirements. We will be covering the writing process, which will be pre-writing. We'll go over that um, a little bit later. Grammar, we will have weekly writings. We will have a midterm essay. We have three essays in all, plus a presentation. Um, the three essays are going to be informative, argumentative, and narrative. You will also have a final essay, so that's four essays, and then you will have a presentation. So you will have five major assignments, um, a narrative essay, an informative essay, an argumentative essay, a final essay, and a presentation of a short story of your choice. We'll talk a little bit about that later. You will also have the book project, which that's going to be the presentation. Um, project reflections, final essay, and a final exam. Do not get the two confused. You will submit a final essay to me and you will also be taking a final exam. Unless otherwise indicated, all out of class assignments should use MLA format and they should be submitted through Turnitin or Blackboard. I will not accept assignments through email, Google Docs, course messages, etc. unless you can screenshot and prove to me that you are having technical difficulties. I need a picture. It can be a screenshot. It can be a phone picture. If you get an error message and it tells you you cannot submit, I need a picture of that before I will accept an assignment any other way. Otherwise, I will not accept the assignment. Okay. 
program outcomes essentially getting you ready for competition one. My attendance and makeup work policy. You are expected to attend each week at the scheduled time. Um, you are also expected to conference with me at least once a month. You will have about maybe four conferences this semester. I do accept makeup work and late work in cases of extreme medical emergency, bereavement, or other circumstances outside of your control. So basically what that means is if you know you're gonna fall behind or you have already fallen behind, you need to contact me ASAP. Um, you need to let me know what's going on. I'm very flexible. I will work with you, okay? Please do so before the due date if possible. I know sometimes that's not always possible, but if you have an emergency and you think it's going to affect your work, be better safe than sorry and contact me and let me know and I'll work with you. Please note that you will not be failed for non-attendance. Um, if you don't attend class, that's not an automatic failure. I have done that in the past. I feel like it's a little unfair to do it right now. Um, please be aware that I will be keeping track of your attendance. Um, if you are failing your course when I early alert you, I will mention attendance as a factor. Again, we will have Zoom meetings from 9.40 in the morning to 10.55 in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you're in the online class, it is not required for you to attend. You can if you want. I will also be posting recordings. And if you're in the face-to-face -face class, again, not required for you to attend to attend, strongly recommended. Um, at least watch the recording if you are unable to make the session, okay? Okay, communication is going to be key because we are in a distance learning format. You are expected to communicate with me. That's gonna be email, Zoom, phone, um, course messages, uh, seeing me in person in my office hours, uh, text messages, you're gonna have to communicate and you're going to have to participate in class. And that is for everybody. Everybody's gonna have to talk at least once. Um, okay, all assignments should be turned in on time. It is your responsibility to know when things are due. Um, you will find due dates in a number of places. They will be at the top of the week. They will be in Blackboard announcements. They are in the syllabus, which we're gonna get to in a minute. And of course, if you are unsure, you can always ask me. I'm available. All assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. on the day they're indicated. If you're absent or you know you're going to be missing stuff, you need to let me know. Please note that if you're missing stuff for Howard College approved activities, that's going to be athletics, drama, music. If you are doing something for the college and you're going to miss your assignment, that's excused. If you're going to miss your Zoom session, that's excused. I need to know, okay? Late work. Okay, there is going to be a one day grace period for submitting work for every assignment except the final essay and the final exam. For example, if the assignment is due on, so this says June 2nd, but if it's due on September 14th, you can submit it September 15th with no penalty. But after that, it is a zero. The due date is the DUE date, it is not the DOD date. So please plan on submitting your work accordingly. The way you're going to be graded is you're going to have paired coursework of 20 or 200 points, and then you're going to have this course for 800 points. So your paired coursework is going to be in your co-requisite class. For some of you, that's going to be another English class. For others, that's going to be what's called a reading restricted course. That's your government, your psychology, um, your history, etc. So here's the correlation of letter points and grades. At the end of the course, if you have 900 to 1,000 points, that's an A, to drop the zero. B is 800 to 899, to drop the last digit, and et cetera, and you'll see the chart in your syllabus, okay? All right, your accessibility statements. We strive to ensure the accessibility of programs, classes, and services to students with disabilities. If you have a documented disability and you believe you need an accommodation for this class, or if you have concerns about your learning needs, please contact your campus's accessibility services coordinator as soon as possible. Howard College students, you'll find that in the advising office. Switch students, I'm sure you will also find in the advising office.
you'll see that there is a link to the disability services page for Howard College campus. And if you need an accommodation, please get that requested ASAP. Um, a little bit later in the syllabus, I think I have the people you need to talk to. Um, I'm dyslexic, that's why I wear pink glasses. I had extra time for testing for a lot of my classes starting out in college, okay? Okay, so here you go. Here's the course calendar. It tells you what's due, it tells you when it's due, and it has every assignment for the semester. If I add or take away in an assignment, I will let you know through a Blackboard announcement, okay? Course content and rigor, this is a college level course. We may be talking about controversial, sensitive, and slash or adult material. You are expected to have the readiness for college level rigor and content. Um, our novel in particular, it deals with issues of race, it deals with issues of disability, it deals with issues of sexuality. So please be prepared to encounter those things in the novel and other readings. Our instructional plan for altered operations. Um, Essentially, things are a little hectic right now. We are going to be changing to best suit the needs of the student. So there may be changes in the instructional method, the attendance requirements, the testing assignment requirements, in contact preferences. Um, you're going to be expected to utilize Blackboard. You're going to be expected to use, utilize um, other instructional resources. For me right now, that's going to be Google Forms and possibly Slack. Um, you need to communicate with me. We need to be in constant communication, email, phone, face-to-face, -face, Zoom meetings, text, course messages. Please contact me if you have any questions. I encourage that. You are encouraged to ask questions. You are also encouraged to offer suggestions for improvement. If something's not working for you, if the vibe isn't right, please let me know and I will do my best to fix it. Face covering requirements. If you are on campus, you have to wear a mask. Indoors, hallways, lobbies, restrooms, etc., and in outdoor spaces where it's not possible to maintain six feet of physical distance. Okay, confidentiality in courses. Um, I follow FERPA guidelines, which means that I do not talk about your grades, your attendance, your behavior, etc., with anyone that is not legally entitled to that information. I will be talking to your advisors about it. I will be talking to your coaches about it. Um, the Dean of Students, if she needs to get involved, will know. Um, but if you want your parents to know, if you want your best friend to know, if you want your spouse to know, you're gonna have to sign paperwork in the registrar's office. Otherwise, I will not share that information, okay? Here's the ADA statement. Um, we talked a little bit about that already. Um, if you do need an accommodation for Big Spring, you are going to need to contact Jill Johnson. For St. Angelo, you're going to need to contact Luis Martinez. Um, I'm afraid I don't know the ADA coordinator for La Mesa site. I'm sure if you contact Jill Johnson or Luis Martinez, they will let you know. Uh, smoking any cigarettes, don't vape inside the buildings, don't vape inside the vehicles, etc. Okay, and this is just some general course policy information. Um, I'm just going to kind of briefly summarize. You should have some access to the internet, you should have access to Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, PDF Reader, et cetera. Um, when you submit your assignments, they need to be in a Word document, which is a dot doc X or a dot doc. Um, you'll see it right here, or it needs to be in a PDF file. So a Word document or a PDF file, those are the only things my computer can open, regardless of whether I'm on campus or not. If you submit a pages document, I'm gonna ask you to convert it to either a Word document or a PDF. If you need help with that, let me know. I can send you a video on how to do that. Um, if you have submission issues, again, I need proof and I need proof before the deadline. So if it is a couple of days before the deadline and you're trying to submit something, screenshot it, send it to me, let me know. I require proof at least 48 hours in advance. So please do not contact me at 10 o'clock the night it's due saying you cannot submit it because that's going to be past the deadline. Okay. Grades and due dates. The gradebook in Blackboard displays an automatically generated grade. It is not always as accurate as it can be. You're going to want to look at your point values and you're going to want to look at how many points we have total. If you are ever unsure about your grade, please let me know and I will calculate it and I will explain to you how I calculated it. Okay. Again, I will accept makeup work or late work in cases of extreme medical emergency, bereavement, or other circumstances outside your control. I will be sending a weekly Blackboard announcement. 
Um, email response time is from 24 to 48 hours during the week. On weekends, it may take at least 60 hours. Um, so I am pretty quick at answering my email. Um, feel free to contact me multiple ways about the same issue. If you need to call me, if you need to text me, course message me, email me, see me through a Zoom meeting, see me in a face-to-face -face meeting, that's fine. I don't mind being contacted multiple times. Um, questions about personal information? You are encouraged to ask questions about the material and participate in class discussions. In fact, you're going to have to participate in class discussions due to the nature of our course. Um, personal questions about grades, attendance, or any other personal matters should be sent to me via email or text or phone call. You need to ask it me privately, okay? Again, I follow FERPA guidelines, respect and decorum. You're expected to show respect not just to me, but to your classmates, both in class and in online work. I define respect as courtesy and consideration of another person. Proper titles should be used and inappropriate language should be avoided. Um, what I mean by inappropriate language is don't, don't curse at someone. Like if you use cursing for like a little bit of flavor, like, oh, that's absolutely awesome. You know what I mean? That's fine. Just don't curse at anyone. Um, blah, blah. Okay, last but not least, plagiarism and academic integrity. You have to write your own papers. There are several types of plagiarism. I will be going over that in the next video. Um, plagiarism is defined as the taking of words or ideas that are not your own without proper citation. So what that means is you can quote somebody, you can paraphrase somebody, you just have to cite it. Your whole essay cannot be quotes and paraphrases. Um, you also cannot reuse an essay you've written for a previous class. You cannot use an essay that somebody else has written for you. Um, you can use parts of that essay if you quote and cite it but most of the essay has to be your own words. Any form of plagiarism will receive a zero. The way that I'm gonna know it's plagiarism is we A, have a plagiarism checker, B, I'm gonna check your citations and see if I have any questions, I will ask you about your paper, okay? The Dean of Students will also be contacted for any form of plagiarism. On the plagiarism checker, that's called turn it in. All papers should aim for 20% or less matching. Um, if it's higher than that, I will take a personal look, okay? Just because it's over 20% does not mean that it's plagiarism. I will take a look. Chances are you just overquoted, you over paraphrased. Maybe it flagged the citation. So academic integrity. Cheating involves copying another student's work, collaborating with another student without permission, buying, selling, or soliciting the contents of academic work. Again, if you are found to be doing this, I will contact the Dean of Students. Okay, all right, that is it for the course policies and the syllabus. Again, if you have any questions, email is kking at howardcollege.edu. Phone number is 432-935-1031. You can contact me through course message. We can set up a Zoom meeting. Um, you can come see me face to face starting Monday. My office hours are going to be from 2 p.m. to 3.30 in Old Main 206, which is the tutoring center. And I will see you guys, hopefully, on Monday. All right. Goodbye.